I think for you to come to us and say, we've reevaluated how we live and we actually think we need less space and we want more garden and we want more amenity, but we want to build less. I think that was a moment where we realized how values aligned we really were and we were embarking on a really special collaboration. Yeah. urban character and architectural character drew me to Port Melbourne in the first place. I love that there's always activity around, so you know the cafe's always buzzing, pub out the back's always thriving. There's a lot of beautiful parks and gardens and really established old historic trees just across the road. So we've been living in Port Melbourne probably for about 24 years. Some of the things we loved about the house when we first arrived is the Victorian heritage details. There's a lot of inherent charm, especially, you know, in the street frontage, which is heritage listed. But I guess like a lot of Victorian terraces, probably a bit challenged with light and ventilation. It's wonderful to keep cool when it's yeah. summertime, but really cold. And it had an 80s extension tacked on. I remember your pink bathroom. Yeah, and this space out the back was actually almost like a conservatory. Yeah. Single glazed, and the only heating was an open fire. So you can imagine it was really thermally inefficient. Claire and Luke were really looking to improve the thermal envelope of the house and bring in more light and ventilation. You also spoke to us a lot about family and entertaining and how your family comes to visit from Tassie and wanting space to be able to accommodate them. We bought the house in 2013 but yeah. didn't live in it because we moved fairly immediately to Copenhagen. We engaged Breathe for some reason before we left <laughs> and we had a growing family at that time two kids and it was a chaotic life and we were thinking oh god we need so much more space. Everyone needs their own room, we need a second living space, you know, let's, let's make this our family home and let's make it big. And then we sort of left Breathe with that brief, moved to Copenhagen, and really interestingly, it completely turned us around on what we need and how we should be living. We in Copenhagen lived in a very small apartment. We came to realise that we really didn't need that much room. And in fact, we loved being and living close together. When we came back to Melbourne then, really we changed our brief completely. Reined it in, yeah. much more in line with Breathe's philosophy to build less. When you walk through the front door, there's the two kids' bedrooms stairwell and that all has the Victorian heritage detailing. And you come through and there's sort of a threshold moment between old and new and the original floorboard stop and the new Versace old floorboards begin. And that's when you are in what is the original footprint of the house except for the last meter or so, but has been reconfigured into a more sort of contemporary space with the courtyards carved out of it to bring in the lot uh, and the ventilation and also to improve the functionality for your family. So sort of more open plan kitchen and dining, and then the living room that has this beautiful connection out into the landscaped garden and courtyard. And then upstairs, we've got your bedroom, an extra bathroom, and Luke's office. Yeah, Luke's study, yeah, study. yeah, yeah. Through which you can access the roof garden, yeah. which wasn't planned, but it's just evolved. On the other side of the courtyard, we've got the new studio, which addresses the laneway to the rear. It's a two-story freestanding studio, Claire's office, and upstairs is the guest bedroom and bathrooms. This central courtyard, that's fairly typical of a Victorian house. The light only came into the room via two small windows. It wasn't a space you could actually look out into nor use, but I think opening that up and adding a big glass slider and a large glass wall, all double glazed, has been a revelation actually. It's beautiful looking out onto that space. And then the rear courtyard between the buildings is only small, but gee, it works hard for us yeah. because it's like an oasis out there. Beautiful wall of greenery, and we've planted a couple of feature trees Deliberately, we love natives, so there's a beautiful twisted banksia that's really starting to grow, and there's a gorgeous flowering gum, which is going to provide, I think, ultimately a canopy over the entire yeah. space. And when you're upstairs in the studio, it does feel like you're in a tree house.
I love timber and I love brickwork and recycled materials and I love an honesty in materials. Mm. I like to use a material and for it to just speak to what it is. I don't like applied finishes. Yeah. And I think we said to you, minimise plasterboard, minimise paint. And I think that's really why this space is so successful in my yeah. opinion. We were always looking for ways to lower the embodied energy of the project. So looking almost exclusively at recycled material because the recycled brick is really the hero of the materials palette. And certainly in the studio, it's basically every surface. So it's, the, it's double brick. Recycled brick to the outside, recycled brick to the inside, and recycled brick floors as well. Except for on the mezzanine level, which has the oiled yellow tongue. So just keeping it super simple and using less material. The stack bond formation of the brickwork I think is beautiful. It's contemporary. So while the bricks are recycled, it just looks so stylish. And people often stop out the back of the place and say, hey, I haven't seen that pattern of brickwork that often. As far as the internal materials palette, the recycled hardwood floorboards are Taz Oak. They're recycled from other homes around Victoria. And I love that they speak to the existing floorboards, which are the Baltic pine, but they are a different size and character and they're local instead of imported. Every time I come to your house, I just love the way that the patina is developing on the materials has a really beautiful authenticity about the materials. The key elements of the house that's really successful, I think, is the lighting. I'm not a big fan of down lights. They have a yeah. time and a place yeah. when you need sort of work and bright light, but I love just the lighting light. scenes. And really wanted a, a house that was lit really thoughtfully and carefully with warm light, actually enhancing each of the unique individual spaces with yeah. a really special lighting piece. We were very keen to minimise our footprint and really touching the planet lightly. We've got a six kilowatt solar panel system and it's not an easy thing to do to fit an old Victorian with yeah. not <laughs> ideal orientation with yeah. solar panels. And a huge street tree. Yeah, yeah. And a huge street tree, but we've done our absolute best. So we've got the induction cooktop yep. as well, and you've got the rainwater garden. All of the masonry provides an extraordinary amount of thermal mass, which stabilizes the temperature over time. And then just like really high performance, double glazed windows, thermally broken aluminum, making sure that we're creating a really airtight and an insulated thermal envelope. I think one of the key sustainability moves is actually just building less as well. Yeah. That re-evaluation of the brief and considering how much you really needed to build is like a tremendous contribution to the sustainability Absolutely. aspects of the project. Yeah. Brick and Gable House is a really beautiful, humble example of living in a small footprint of a family re-evaluating what they need to reduce their impact on the planet. And one of the things that's been really special about this project is the values alignment between yourself and Luke and Breathe as well. And because of that, we've been able to deliver a collaborative project that really here is sustainability, reducing embodied energy, generating power on site, and really honoring the way that you live as a family in a really simple, robust, and thoughtful way.